Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you this morning to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I, for my whole life, since I was very little, have loved Christmas books. Uh, And from my favorite collection of these texts, I have the Texas night before Christmas. <laughs> Santa Mouse, The Littlest Angel, The Burro. Some are old, felt, well worn, sticky, maybe, <laughs> from Christmas candy and certainly stained by hot cocoa and probably if I were honest, some drool. (laughs) I get them out every year. I love to kind of sort through them, read some of my favorites. I read them to my kids. I can't wait to read them to my grandkids. Then there are the Victorian Christmas ghost stories, but that's a whole nother genre if we're talking about later. One of my adult favorites, though, is by a theologian named Friedrich Schleiermacher. And it's called the Christmas Eve Celebration. It has a witty title there, chosen to draw all children in. A dialogue, it is. And after many pages of the people arguing back and forth about the meaning of the nativity and Christmas, philosophy and theology. We get to the final pages and we hear this, we read this quote, the unspeakable subject, says the newcomer to the group, meaning Christ in the incarnation. The unspeakable subject demands, he says, unspeakable joy. We discover in the very last pages that God is truly present in this season among friends gathered in their joy, in their love, at their tables, in their homes, like a living nativity. The reality, the truth of the incarnation is all around us, evidenced in last night's gathering and carol singing and friendship and the rediscovering of who our kin are. But the lessons today, they have a different feel, don't they? (laughs) The people in our passage from Matthew's gospel are experiencing some confusion about who to follow, some doubt, some disappointment, and even some disillusionment. But you all, these are the doldrums of faith. These are the crises you and I experience on an ongoing basis. Our own doubts, right? Our own confusion from time to time. Our own disillusionment. And so this passage, if you will, about prophets helps us with the idea, I think, of misplaced hope. Misplaced hope is something we all, even the most faithful among us, struggle with. It's something I struggle with. We are from time to time, you see, tempted to not follow the great messengers and prophets like John, but to follow other prophets. Now, there are, of course, good prophets. John is one of them. But in our day-to-day life, we would say there are good prophets as well. There are wise clergy There are spiritual uh, people. There are folks who help one another and serve the poor. These are the good prophets like John the Baptist that we could even name in this congregation today. I could name some of them for you. These prophets like John always point towards an image of Christ's goodness, Christ's 
kindness, Christ's love and mercy. In and through the good prophet, priest, baptized person, we see Christ at work restoring literally people to health who have been lame, restoring people into community after they've been lost, helping people hear the good news of salvation when they thought there was no hope. These are the good prophets, and they're all around us. But the problem is for us that we as humans tend to follow and trust the not-so-good prophets more. The prophets that promise other things. Like we follow the prophet of destiny, the prophet that tells us that we can make it all happen ourselves. That we are the ones. We don't need anybody's help. We can do it. We follow the prophet of security. That if we have this or that, or if we do this, or if we get it right, we'll be safe. This is a dangerous one because we mistake this one for God and think if we're just good enough, God will love us, which isn't true. God loves us anyway. We follow the prophet of love that tells us that if we find someone to love us, we have it made, never realizing that love is not about what you get. It's about what you give. Then there's the prophet of friendship and approval. Those are powerful. Those are powerful. Prophet of food, of wine and spirits, ones that ask nothing of us and provide only short-lived comfort. I could go on and on, but the truth is these are only the ancient Greek gods and demigods refashioned for us today. They're the same ones over centuries we've always looked for. They're the ones that cause the disillusionment. They're the ones that make a sense of hopelessness because they never can deliver in the end. And when life is all done, none of that matters. What truly matters is the love among us. The unspeakable joy that we get to have from Ken sitting around us at the very end, I promise, I have sat with so many people. Nothing matters but the love you gave away and the love in that room at that moment. They all fail. Now, this is the work of Advent. To understand that those are just the prophets. <laughs> those are the ones that are not good for us. They promise a lot, you know. And we get wooed by them. It can be a big deal, but truth is most of the time it's not. But they're constantly there. But Advent tells us we're to turn from that prophet to the prophets like John the Baptist and to turn to Christ most ultimately, to turn and seek a most high God, to open ourselves up to the reality and the truth, an unspeakable one, that Christ is born, God is born in a manger, God made manifest in human form for our sake and for the sake of the world, who ensures that we will spend eternity with the God of the cosmos, who frees us, from disappointment and false prophets in this world and ensures that death and evil and division and all of those fake promises will not have the last word, but that what the last word is is a word of love and kindness such that we discover an unspeakable joy in the incarnation and the nativity that is born already for us, a Christ who is present among our friends, gathered amidst our families, and that in our unspeakable joy and in our love and shared love, we are actually brought close to God who has been with us all this time. God Emmanuel, all along. And so in turn, what we find out, not just 
now, not just in this moment for one hour a week, but in seven days a week, you and I are living the nativity all the time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you. Thank you.